Okay, in this segment, we are going to set up the stations so that the positioner will rotate properly. And we will start out by removing or hiding the face plates and motor mounts and the spreader or weld curtain and the main beam. We do that so that we can get to the center faceplate in order to add the external axis frame. And the first one is station one or S1 and we will set the position of that to the center of the main drive faceplate and the flag on that frame needs to point toward the motor or away from the positioner because it is an indirect drive. Side A and side B, the flag will point toward the positioners or the tooling because it's direct drive. Next, we will bring the models back in for the spreader and the main beam. And then we need to set those to the EX1 variable in order to control the rotation of them. So first we will start out by setting the main drive or do a set parent and that is going to be on the station 1 S1 and we're going to branch out to the tree and look for S1 underscore EX1 and that's what it will be attached to. Next we will do the main spreader or weld curtain and attach that to the same thing. It will also be attached to S1 EX1. And then so that the tailstock can also follow properly, we will set the uh, tailstock swing arm to EX1. And once we get those models set, we will get ready to start setting up, then putting the frames on S2 and S3. Now we'll get ready to start setting the uh, S2, which is station A frame, to that side A faceplate. And like I said earlier, side A and side B are considered direct drives. And the flag that is on that frame will point into the tooling. Here I just snapped the frame off to the side to get it out of my way so that I could bring it back and make sure that I was picking a good center point. And now I'm rotating the flag down to point into the tooling. Now we're going to repeat the same thing for station B, which is S3. And it's easy as that. And as you work along, it's always a good idea to uh, hit save before you continue, just in case. Now we're going to start out, and we need to attach the S2 to the S1 EX1 variable. And we'll also place the S3 to the e S1 EX1 variable. This needs to be done so that side A and side B with your tooling follows the main sweep. Next, so that the tailstock follows appropriately, 
we need to set the tailstock adapter for side A to the S2 EX1. So that would be a set parent and we're going to set that to S2 EX1. And then we're going to repeat that for the station B tailstock mount and that will be attached to S3 EX1. And this is done so that the tailstock mounting flange will just follow your part and it just looks a lot better. It has nothing to do with any programming or anything else, it's just to follow it and make it aesthetically look um, much better. Next we're going to turn the models back on for the motor mount and face plates and we're going to attach those. Um, site A motor mount will be attached to the S2 EX1. And then we'll repeat the same thing for the motor mount and face plate for site B and that will be attached to the S3 EX1. And then as always it's a great good idea to hit save. Next we're going to start checking motion to make sure that our models follow each station appropriately for side A and side B. Next we're going to start up maintenance mode and, and turn on some settings for coordinated motion and group control. This can be done now as I'm going to demonstrate or it could also be done at the start of the system build. And after maintenance mode opens up, we'll get started by going to setup and go down to the bottom. It'll be option function and then we're going to start looking for uh, coordinated motion and we will enable that. And then a little bit further down will be extended groups and we also want to set that once you have the settings done that you want you can move that window out of the way and then hit the end and it will start the controller back up and it's normal power up